This is Patrick W. Crawford, also known as the Duck Cow, and I'm going to take the next couple of minutes to talk about a neat and super convenient trick called overrides. Now the scenario where this is helpful is, for example, when you are working with library linked rigs or any kind of data and you need to make changes on the fly. Now you can imagine, for example, that you have an animation project with multiple scenes and you want to reuse the same rig in all those scenes. The best way to do that, of course, is using a library linked group. And that's what I have here in this scene. I have a character that is library linked in from another file, but then I have created a proxy to be able to modify this, this rig and pose him however I want. Now that's very great, but as soon as I need to do anything more, I'm limited to what I'm able to modify in this scene. So for example, I can't move or delete his hat I can't change any of his textures or anything. I'd have to go back into the original source files, make those changes there to then make them propagate and show up in this scene. Okay, I could do that, but what if I have this file linked into multiple different scenes and I only want the change to appear in one scene? So we can say, for example, maybe we don't want to have his hat in all the scenes. Well, I could go into the source rig file create a property with a driver, which when the property is zero, it maybe hides the hat. When the property is one, it shows it up again. But there's a bit of setup to do that and it's not very dynamic. I'd have to go in and set that up. And then I have this unnecessary control point in all the other scenes where I don't need to be able to toggle the hat on and off. And that's where overrides come in handy. It's something that you can immediately change in this scene with a library linked rig without changing the source file at all. And the way we do this, drum roll, is using a little bit of Python. So don't get afraid, if you haven't used any Python, this is probably the simplest use of Python and Blender you could possibly do, and it's also a great way to get started. So to illustrate what I'm talking about, in my Blender instance, I'm actually going to, one, gonna change my DPI so it's a little bit larger for everyone to see. And it changes to be 1.25. And then I'm gonna go from the default layout to the scripting layout. Or you could change it so that you have a text editor view as well as a console, a Python console view. So how does this work? Essentially, when you load in a Blender file and it has library linked data, all it's really doing is loading your current file and then loading the objects from the library file, but then they still exist in the scene kind of like any other object. And to illustrate this, I'm going to type a command, which is bpy.data.objects. And once I've typed that, I'm going to press this autocomplete key. And you'll see that it automatically gives me the rest of the ways I could complete this line of code. But what it's really doing for me is showing all the objects in this scene. And I notice that this rig, which I have library linked in, the objects of this rig, interestingly enough, show up as if they're any other object in this file. So in reality, this foxy.hat and foxy.body, they're actually files that if I go into my assets, they're from this foxy.blend file here. But they show up like any other object over here. So an interesting thing we can do is if I type foxy.hat and then type dot hide equals true with a capital T, when I press enter, you'll notice the hat actually disappears. Now I haven't modified the original file in any way. I've only modified this current scene. So that's great. So we can modify the scene using Python. But if I were to save this file right now, control S, and then reload this file, you'll notice that, oh no, the hat is back again. Even though we hit it, it seems like it came back, nothing changed. Well, that's because every time you load a Blender file, it refreshes all of the library linked data. In fact, it doesn't save the library linked data with the Blend file. So the fact that I hid the hat before I saved, it didn't actually save that data part of the Blend file. It refreshed the library. So how is this useful? Well, we actually create a Python script that just automatically runs every time the Blender files open after the library link data is loaded. And the way we do this is using a script. So again, I'm gonna be in my scripting window, 
or the text editor window, I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to type in the name override.py. It is important that I type .py at the end, and then I'm going to scroll over to the right on the header to enable this register button. If it's hidden by your view, you can also press control up to maximize the screen size, press register, and then you can demaximize. All right. Now, just to clarify why this is important, this tells Blender it's a Python module, so it's a piece of code, and the register button means it will automatically run this Python file whenever the file is loaded. You'll often see that rigs will do this in order to create a little panel to make controlling the rig a little bit more convenient. It will define operators or little buttons and sliders, but in this case, we're just running free Python code. So. Now onto the code itself. It's essentially what we already wrote. So I'm gonna first do import BPY, which is just the way we access all of Blender's data. And then we're gonna use the same line we did before. It's going to be bpy.data.objects with an S. And then we're going to type in the name of our object. It does matter that you do it exactly correct. So you'll notice you'll get an error if you don't type exactly what you're looking for or if it doesn't exist anymore. But in this case, it's foxy.hat then close quotes, then close bracket, dot hide equals true. Now it's also important if we wanna make it hidden in the viewport, you know, this first command is sort of like just pressing H, uh, which as you would know, does not hide it in the render. So to hide it into the render, I'm gonna copy that whole line of code. Then I'm gonna change hide to say hide underscore render. So now if I were to press run script, you can see it's hidden there. If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save just in case, uh, but then I'm going to press F12 and you'll see that in the rendered view, you'll notice the hat is also gone there. So it in fact did work. And then if I press escape, I can reload the Blender file and you'll see that it actually doesn't immediately run the script. This is a good point to highlight. Uh, Blender has a security feature where it will not automatically load and run Python scripts part of files. So you'll get this little box up here that says auto run disabled, reload trusted. Once I press this, it's gonna reload the file and then now you'll see that the script in fact did run. And so now the hat is gone automatically. I haven't had to go into the script over here. I never have to come back to here. It's as if I have actually deleted that object from the scene or in this case, I haven't deleted. I've only hidden it uh, a little bit safer you could say. But yeah, so that is great. Um, another thing that we can do is let's say that we don't actually want to hide the hat. But we want to change the image texture on the hat. You know, so another example of a different type of override. So I'm going to comment out these lines of code. So by typing this little pound sign or hash sign, I'm actually disabling the code so it doesn't actually run anything. So I'm going to press save. I'm going to reload it so that the hat comes back because again, essentially I've reloaded the file. It refreshed the library linked rig and it did not run these two lines of code. So the hat is still visible, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the image of the hat. So right now it is of a green hat that has a little star on it. I know that in my assets file over here that I have a texture which is called foxyhatalt.png as opposed to foxyhat.png. Now, how do we do this? we modify the image file, which is library linked. To help illustrate this, I'm gonna to go to any UV image editor, and then from the dropdown, I'm going to select my foxyhat.png image, and you'll notice that Blender will actually display all the images in the file, including the library linked ones. You'll notice that library linked images are indicated by a little L on the left-hand side. So when I press enter here, you'll see our image come up as you'd expect. Now what I can do is actually get a quick reference to this data block in Python by hovering over the drop down button here, but instead of uh, single clicking, I'm gonna hold my left click and drag it over to my console window. And then you'll see that will populate the bpy.data.images, and then in brackets and quotes, foxyhat.png. And what I can do here is see what the current file reference is for this image data block. So by typing dot file path, 
and then pressing enter, I can see that it's referencing the relative path to the textures and then the foxyhat.png location. So if I want to change that image, actually all I have to do is if I press the up arrow just once, I can type equal. I'm going to copy this exact path here and then I'm just going to go back in and type ALT because I know that's the name of my other image. And then when I press enter this time, you'll notice it immediately reloads the image. It loads in the blue image in place of the original green one. And again, we're not modifying the source data at all. Some kind of texture switching mechanism. We're just directly changing the file. So we ran this in the interactive Python console, but really what we need to do is copy this and paste it into our Python module. Make sure you press save on the file. And now when I reload Blender, you'll see it keeps the image override. And even when I go into render, you'll notice that the blue image is now there. Great, so this is awesome. So I've now showed two different kinds of overrides. There are many other things you can do. I'm gonna show one more example because it's a little bit uh, common, you could say. It can be used in a lot of places, especially more of buildings and things like that. But I'll again show it with this rig. So say we have another scene that is instead of this day scene where he's looking around wearing his hat, we actually have a night scene and he's going to take a sleep. So if we go into the night scene, we'll see he's resting out there on the left hand side and he has his campfire going, uh, but he's still wearing his hat and you don't want to actually remove the hat. You want to show that he took the hat and he put it on the log next to him. Now again, we could use the trick where we hide the hat and then maybe we directly append the hat from the source scene. But again, that's a little bit cumbersome. So instead, the override we're going to do this time is actually overriding the parent of the hat object. So instead of the hat being parented to the rig, which is proxied, we're going to parent it to an empty null object. So I'm going to, again, switch to my scripting window from over here. And then in the 3D screen, I'm going to use Shift A and then add an empty. Uh, it really could be any object, but I'm just going to use an empty because it's easy. And then I'll rename it to be hat underscore override. Now, what we want to do is change the parent to be from the rig to this null object. So I'm going to type, I'm going to go ahead and actually create my new Python script because again, we're in a completely new scene now. Uh, none of the overrides of the other scene have carried over because it's a completely different scene. So I'm going to type override.py again, and then I'm going to, don't forget this, you need to check the register module. And then I'm going to type in import bpy as before. And now I'm going to get the reference for our two objects. The two objects we need are the hat as well as the empty. So the hat, as we recall from before, is we can name it give it a shorthand variable name. So this is just a reference. So hat equals bpy.data.objects with an S and then foxy.hat, end quote. And there we go. And then we want to get the reference for the override empty. So I'm going to type override equals. And actually, I'm going to use a little bit of a shortcut. If you go into the properties windows and you go to the object tab, if you see up here, it has a little pin icon plus the scene, and then it has the hat with a little cube next to it. You can, in the same way with the image, you can actually drag and drop this into the console window or a text editor over here, and it will immediately just give me that data block. So it saves me some typing. And now all we have to do is type hat.parent equals override. So again, this dot parent here is the same thing as this parent field over here. Obviously, I have the empty selected, uh, but for the hat, once we run this code, it's effectively filling in that blank text field with our empty object. So pressing run script, you'll see the hat immediately moves. And now as I move the empty around, it also moves the hat around, which is awesome. And I can move it around, I can rotate it, I can scale it, all these great things. You'll notice that the scaling and location is a little bit off. Uh, so one thing we can do to kind of assist that a little bit is to clear the location of the hat relative to the empty in this library link scene or this scene from which it is library linked. 
So I'm gonna type hat.location equals, and then in parentheses, three zeros, which is the same as XYZ being set to zero. So I'm gonna press run script again. And you'll notice it kind of moves the hat location a little bit. It's still not perfectly set to the empty itself, but at least is a center of rotation and scaling point. So it's a little bit easier to work with. And now all I'm gonna do is just place it into the scene in a little bit of a better spot. So if I go down here and just kind of move it around, put it onto this log, like just kind of resting against the log over here. Um, rotate a little bit more, move it over here. And now we have the, uh, yeah, the hat just kind of sitting out here on top of the log. If I go back into render mode, we can see that it works in here. And great, so we're, we're able to move things separately from the rig without having to create some kind of strange control that does like a child of parenting script or something that otherwise, you know, can be a challenge uh, to, dissociate like the hat from the rig when the hat is usually attached to the rig. I can make this character get up and dance and move around. And just to illustrate that, it's not gonna move the hat at all because I've completely cleared the parent. So if I move the master rig down here, the hat stays in place. So that's a super, super useful thing. So this is a quick example of another override you can use. I definitely hope this was a useful little trick. There are obviously tons more you could do with Python and overrides and in Python in general. If you're curious to see more of these resources, I have the webpage up here where you can go and download these examples. So you can have the code as well as the file. And I also have some references to other Python resources if you're interested in learning more about Python from an artist standpoint or just from a, a beginner standpoint, you really can do a lot and it's really a lot easier than you might think. So again, I hope this was helpful. Maybe it'll come in handy one day when you want to make a small change to your library linked animation. Keep this in mind. And if you have any questions or want assistance in terms of learning to script, again, go to my website, happy to help, jump on and give some pointers if you run into trickier situations or have more unique ideas for overrides you wanna be able to do. All right, that's all I've got for now. Again, this is Patrick W. Crawford, also at The Duck Cow on Twitter and other locations. And with that, until next time.